another beautiful Iowa day. Yep, that's right guys. Again, it is raining in Iowa and it's been raining all day. It's it's supposed to be like this all week. It's really getting on my nerves. Um, I'm actually really getting tired of keep staying cooped up in here and not being able to take this out and show you guys what the S13 IV is all about. Um, today we're actually not going to be working on this. We're actually going to go and check out uh, my buddy Jake's RB20 S13 Sylvia Front. Uh, we'll check that out and maybe get a little information out of him on how we got it and why you always want to bring a trailer to buy a used car. Um, I don't care if they tell you that it's a perfect running car, always bring a trailer. Um, it's better to be safe than sorry. When I went to Texas to get this, I brought a trailer. Um, I knew it could make it back. I thought they told me it could make it back. Didn't trust it. We brought a trailer, and we should have done the same thing with Jake's uh, S13. So let's go and head over there, check that out, and I'll see you guys there. S13. This is a this is a budget slider. Raceland coils. Sketchy welded diff. Howl's pretty loud. <laughs> this is uh this is what Jake calls his poor man skyline. RB20 does. Basic bolt-ons. Uh, we switched the 25 turbo to the back to the 20. It's having some lag issues. Well, like dog shit anyway. And a wheel, twisted motions hydro, which is uh, not working the greatest with uh, stock calipers and stock style brake pads. Flock dash looks great. That's something new this year. Like every swap 240. Uh, speedo doesn't work. He uses phone. Works pretty well. So, Jake likes to get rowdy in this, and uh, we actually found it online. Uh, someone was wanting to trade for a four-door on coilovers. He was having a family or something. Um, Jake actually paid thousand bucks for eleven hundred bucks for it, and then put thousand dollar coilovers on it. And then that's basically it and traded for this. Uh, we drove eight hours, or we drove seven hours. The kid we got it from drove seven hours. We met him halfway in just at the Arkansas border. Um, the Lexus, he traded an LS400 for it. That drove great. This, on the other hand, when we showed up, we just kind of swapped really quick. We thought, you know, it made it up here it's good to go as soon as they left we seen a oil puddle underneath the uh, underneath the car and couldn't open the hood uh, you'll see we have there's a rope on here the hood latch was broken so we couldn't check the oil my hug each other football we took off um, we got an hour down the road, maybe. Uh, Kansas City. 
Kansas City, and uh, we got uh, some tools, got the hood open, checked the oil, oil looked good, uh, something was going on with the dipstick or something because it was reading full, but we knew it wasn't full. Um, then we got just north of Kansas City, and Jake here decides to romp on it. No idea about the car, but just hammers down on it. Uh, we get to going down the road on the interstate. We start smelling smoke. Pull up on a uh, exit ramp. <laughs> And we thought it was on fire. Just started filling the cabin full of smoke. Get out. Look. the He actually broke an axle. And we limped it two hours. Yeah. Two hours. Probably 40 mile an hour. Uh, on the interstate. to From about Maryville area. To Villisca, Iowa. Where we decided... We're done. We're done playing this game. And then we called his dad. His dad came with a truck and trailer. Moral of the story, bring a trailer <laughs> when you're buying a car, especially a clapped out S chassis. It, it wasn't fantastic when we got it. Uh, the oil pan was leaking like a sieve. And if you know about these swaps, it's uh, suspend the engine, drop the subframe to be able to do that. Um, coilovers were all jacked. The kid had it slammed so low, the uh, everything was scraped underneath. And one of the best things we found is the kid actually beat the oil pan in with a hammer to get the sway bar to clear. Instead of just taking off the sway bar or buying a high clearance sway bar, he actually he just beat in the oil pan. Uh, what what have you done since you've had it? Put an oil pan on it, put a sway bar on it, and a radiator, and racing seats. Radiator did start leaking. The last uh, event. The last drift event. The rubber plugs on the bottom here, it actually didn't have them, so it just rattled itself and rattled a hole in itself. Um, what else did we do? We put the shield on it. I mean, clean it up a lot. It was a bunch of different colors like every other clapped out S chassis. Um, but other than that, it's just a, it's a clean, reliable build. I mean, it hasn't left us stranded since you've owned it, other than <laughs> Velisca, I guess. Start it up, Jake. One thing I love about RBs is, boy, do they sound good. Shout out to 10 Tents here. It's a great podcast. Jake went with a little more streetable setup. He went with uh, rubber engine mounts and new rubber engine mounts and new rubber trans mounts. Um, so his is a little more streetable and not so rattly while driving. And he actually did something pretty smart is uh, he actually left his factory seatbelts in with the uh, harnesses. So. He doesn't put the harnesses on to drive on the street, which I have to, and it's not the worst thing in the world, but it definitely gets on your nerves. Um, but he gets rowdy. I'll insert a few clips of uh, a few of his burnouts. He 
He doesn't care. If it if it blows, I we don't have the budget to fix it, right? <laughs> but we're willing to blow it up. He's willing to blow it up. I'm willing to egg him on to blow it up. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. But uh, that's actually going to do it all for today. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and keep on sliding.